morning everyone. In this lesson I would like to talk about probably one of the most important elements of melody playing or solo playing and that's phrasing. Phrasing is super important. I've been teaching you guys a lot of scales and modes and those are important because it's necessary to get them under your fingers and to know what your note choice options are depending on a chord being played and to understand how they interlock up and down the fretboard like the five patterns of the minor or major pentatonic scale or the diagonal major or pentatonic scale and associated blues scales or how the modes interlock and overlap. So these things help you diagram the fretboard and to know kind of where you are and what your note options are within a song following a harmonic progression. But that doesn't mean when it comes time for you to solo that you play right just a straight mode or scale or pentatonic scale you know if you just play It's kind of not very interesting and it's also not how you speak that's the big thing with phrasing learn to play practice playing the way you speak one of the big keys to playing the way you speak is to breathe simple listen to Stevie Ray Vaughan sheets of sound notes upon notes but if you break down all of it, it's all phrasing. He's, he's saying something. It's not just straight scales or straight arpeggios. He has a lot of nuance and um, depth to his phrasing, even if he's just doing it very fast and lots of phrases back to back to back. But, you know, listen to when he slows down. His phrasing is immaculate, you know what I mean? And so that's what great players do, is they find their own sound within them, and then they play the way they speak or sing. Sing your solos. And you'll find you get much more enjoyment out of playing your solos. You have more uh, freedom improvisationally, because you're not just stuck in the uh, a straight kind of pentatonic or whatever major scale minor scale kind of pattern you know so don't be afraid do. have to make sense I learned this from a, the singer in my old band he would just jump in with the band and sing kind of nonsense lyrics but that went somewhere melodically because every phrase kind of goes up or down or has a peak or a valley and so he would figure out the vocal melody just by singing kind of random lines and improvising verses so I kind of do that when I'm playing I sing random stuff and kind of tell a story in my head as I'm soloing. And it gives me anchor points for my dynamics and punctuation. I'll try to give you an example. I'm improvising, man, so sorry if I make a mistake. So, hey, baby, everything was going fine. Sitting on the porch drinking wine And then my baby And then my baby she done gone Ran off with my best friend Ran off with my dog Left me sitting here Better, brighter day. 
Gonna find my way home. Gonna learn to carry on. Gonna find a new way home. So there. I don't know if it was any good, but I just improvised a solo telling a story and switching from major pentatonic, right? Happy, grounded, safe, sitting on the porch, everything's going good, drinking my wine. Occasionally I'd put in the blue note, the minor third. But the tonality is happy. And then I shifted to minor, just went up, just moved my finger from the second finger major shape to the first finger minor shape and continued on with the story, right? Then my baby left me, ran off with my best friend, right? Left me sitting all alone, right? And hear how that all alone, it drops down. All alone, right? It just kind of feels natural to play the way you speak. You don't have to think about it and think, oh, this phrase just descended a whole step and so I need to play a descending whole step. No, just listen to what you're playing and speak out the story and your hands will follow. And then shift between major and minor tonalities, either pentatonic or modes or whatever, and use that to tell your story. Right? You could also start off sad, right? Let's see. They carried mama home to her final resting ground. Gonna find my father there. Gonna hate to stay. switch to major but I know things are gonna shine gonna come back in my prime gonna find my way to salvation's gate gonna find my way back home ever gonna be so I just started out minor, right? Mama died, they're carrying her to heaven, whatever. And then brought it back to major with a little major pentatonic. But that's okay, I'm going to find my way. It's, you know, when it's my time, you know, I'll find my way home. So tell a story with your solos, tell a story with your melody by simply speaking it out verbally, sing out a little story. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to fit the context really of the song you're playing. That helps. You know, if you've got good lyrical content, right? And the song is about something sad or it's an uplifting tune or whatever, and you can draw on that and make your solo or your inner in, in between phrases like your licks, you're playing in between the verses, make them fit with the lyrical content of the song, you know, by simply doing a call and response type thing. For example, if we were playing a rhythm, right, we're playing like an E power chord. And the lyrics were, um, going up town. pentatonic bluesy a little bit of attitude right I'm gonna go up town and find myself a thrill right gonna break down gonna learn to use my will so notice I put that little flat five in there I didn't even like go 
around it. I just stuck that thing. Because, you know, the lyrics were whatever I just sang. I'm improvising this. But the lyrics were like, you know, I'm going down or whatever. I'm about to suffer. So I really wanted to get that dark kind of dangerous tonality in there. Right? So, yeah, man. Listen to the lyrics. Sing what you play. Tell a story using major or minor. And you will find that your phrasing is going to improve tremendously and you're going to get much more enjoyment when it comes time for your solo. Those kind of moments of trepidation where it's like, okay, it's your turn to solo and you're like, ah, what do I play? I've got to play fast. I've got to impress everybody. Remember, start with three notes. You know, you... you don't have to play a lot to say a lot. You know, listen to B.B. King, right? Especially his later playing. His earlier playing, he was pretty hot and really got after it. But his later playing, he slowed down, really went for note choices and sustain. And he would just work like the fifth, minor seventh, root. Phrasing, um, really important. Got to get your vibrato together. It's what gives you that vocal sound. If you just play a note and let it just sit there, ugh, it's, it's unless you've got a lot of feedback going and you're like you figured out that spot in front of your amp where it just keeps this feedback loop, and you just kind of hit that note and you're doing that big rock thing where it's just feeding back. Then that's a whole different ball game. But for you know, 98% of the rest of the time, you're just making music. You want to put a little something on the note, and you can do vibrato two different ways. The kind of classical jazz vibrato technique is a shifting this way, kind of up and down the neck on the note. Right? So instead of a straight note, you're, you're shaking it and make, getting that vibrato. And the vibrato is going to change with the speed at which your hand changes. Real slow, wide vibrato or a real fast vibrato. And so I would practice that all the way up and down the neck, all over on the neck. that kind of vibra a lot of players don't use that one outside of jazz and classical and i just feel like they're you're missing out we, we want options the vibrato you're generally going to see is the shaking of the string this way more horizontally across the neck and again the more the faster you shake it or bend it it's real quick bend and release um the faster the speed of the vibrato. So a slow vibrato versus a fast one. And so you'll hear bends and vibratos a lot. So a bend is just simply like bending up a half step, followed by some vibrato, or maybe bend up a whole step. Or something I love doing. You'll hear it in my playing all the time. It's a Hendrix thing that I heard, and I was like, oh, I gotta figure that out. You bend up, you don't you can do it anywhere on the neck. We'll just do it here at the 12th fret. You strike the high E string and you bend it up and you grab the B string. 
you've got to just really practice it because it's a little unnatural. Generally, when you bend up, your hand wants to go under. This finger wants to go under the B string, but you kind of need to flatten your hand just a little bit to grab the B string and push it up. So what you're doing is you're bending the high E string up a whole step while simultaneously bending the B string up a half step and then strike them both and release. So you get this great rock double bend that you've got to learn some parts of the vocabulary. You know, what do people normally do? How do they normally um, tackle a certain chord or a intro to a solo or whatever? Here's a perfect example. I took this, I heard Stevie Ray Vaughan do this. He's one of my favorite players, but I do my best not to copy him. I do not copy or learn notes or stuff really note for note unless I'm specifically trying to learn a phrase and get it under my fingers. I learned very, very early on, like in the early 90s, in an interview with Kirk Hammett from Metallica when they were like on their third album. And he said that he didn't learn specific notes to solos. He went after the rhythmic feel and the phrasing gist of the solo and then just uh, try to apply that to his own note choices instead of learning it specifically. And I did that for like the next 30 years. As a bass player, I was taking anything that I was inspired by, any little phrase from a guitar player or another bass player or a drummer, and I was working those phrases into my playing without really worrying about them being accurate, specific note for note phrases. I was just going for the rhythmic feel and the kind of melodic basis. And I'll give you an example of that. Let's say the phrase is, we're gonna do this, um, we'll do an E minor pentatonic. And let's just say it's a simple pentatonic blues rock phrase. <laughs> So it's got that little ascending and then it sustains on the octave and does it has another sustain on the fifth. So it's really kind of targeting those two notes, the octave and the fifth. So for me, I'm just going to kind of play that same rhythmic kind of uh, ascending, right? It just went root. Minor third, fourth, fifth, minor seventh, and then to the octave. So I know the octave is my target note. That's where I'm headed. That's where I want to land. So I don't really care how I get there. Maybe I won't start on the root. Right? I started on the third and snuck in the flat five. Which gets me to the same location with a little blue note in the middle. Maybe I want to not even approach it from a pentatonic standpoint, and I'm going to approach it as a Dorian mode. Whole different tonality, right? I went ahead with the kind of a the ascending root second third fourth and then fifth to the major sixth which takes us out of that minor pentatonic sound and gives us the sixth and then I slid up to the octave because that was my target note right and then my next target note was the fifth I'm not really sure what I played to get there because I was improvising but I'm pretty sure it included these notes. 
something like that, I would have played for sure the minor seventh. I hit that six again because that's what's going to give you the Dorian sound. Five, four, and then approach the five from that whole step below. So I'm still getting that that phrase, but I'm playing. Like with that one, instead of stopping on the octave, I stopped on the seventh, the minor seventh. You know? So take the phrase, the thing that you like, and just kind of sing it, speak it out. Ba da boo da boo do boo. You know, you don't have to be perfectly accurate. You don't have to do solfege and sing, you know. Do mi fa so ti do or whatever it is you're trying to get unless you're specifically working on ear training trying to learn a piece note for note okay but i'm just telling you a great way to get a grasp of phrasing and get natural authentic phrasing that sounds like you and not somebody else into your playing is to just get the general gist of it rhythmically and melodically and then apply it to the way you would normally play. Now if you don't have a big bag of tricks and you haven't really get, have the modes and the pentatonics and stuff under your fingers and know how they sound and know what you're gonna get when you play them and know what kind of target notes like knowing to really emphasize that sixth on the Dorian or whatever then you may want to learn some phrases note for note, okay? And then analyze them theoretically so you understand, oh, this works because he went from the four to the six and then, you know, back to the octave. And so you know that that harmonic movement from the four to the six is always going to sound like that regardless of where you play it on the neck. So if you don't have big bag of tricks, then sure, learn a few phrases a handful you know just get you into soloing and stuff but improvisation is the greatest joy in music and i'm really just trying to help you get there and help you express yourself on the instrument so let me show you this thing that i kind of took from stevie ray vaughn which i later learned he took from albert king you know once i started listening to albert king i was like oh there's that stevie ray vaughn thing you know so it's very simple. If you're in a minor pentatonic scale, and let's say we're in the A, key of A, right? A minor. Okay. We're gonna go up to this fourth right here, the octave of the fourth. And we're gonna bend it up a half step to the flat five, the blue note. And then we're going to hit this second octave of the A right there. And you get this traditional singing blues phrase. You can even kind of bounce back and forth. So you'll hear that a lot as Stevie goes into a solo or Albert King or as they're beginning a new passage, right? They've gone through like one verse chorus of a solo and they're starting another one. And it's very common to hear that. You know, so I don't really consider that a bad thing. Learning a small little phrase like that note for note, you know, because it's part of the idiom that you're trying to learn. And it was also something to my ear that I really liked. I really liked when Stevie Ray played that. I liked it when Albert King did that. And then I found out it was a very easy thing to do. You know, um, another like kind of interesting thing that caught my ear. So I learned it specifically was the very beginning of the strange brew by cream. I loved Clapton era cream. In the beginning solo, I just kind of liked the intro to it. And 
and then it, you know, goes into other stuff, but I didn't want to learn the whole solo. I just like that one little phrase. So I sneak that into stuff all the time. And then I'll play out of it. Or whatever, you know, or play into it. to get from into a new phrase, in between phrases, you know, but I don't learn the whole solo and then that's my solo for the way I approach the song or transplant that solo into another blues rock tune or something like that. So that's been a look at phrasing and the kind of the key points to take away are there's nothing wrong with learning some things by ear, especially if you don't have a big bag of tricks to draw from. But don't get fully engrossed into one player's style and learn all their solos note for note. Take the parts out of their solos that really inspire you and just add those to your bag of tricks the way Stevie Ray did with Albert King's. You know, he just takes that and sprinkles it in into his plane and it's like, oh, there's his Albert King influence, right? But he's not copping all of Albert King's solos. He doesn't sound anything like Albert King. He's using a totally different style of guitar and amplifier. And so, you know, it doesn't do you much good. Um, in my opinion, to try to mimic the sound and the phrasing of a famous player note for note. They've already done it. There's already been one Stevie Ray Vaughan or one Steve Vai or one Carlos Santana or David Gilmore or whoever your favorite player is, Aldi Miola, whatever. They've already done that. They were playing from their heart, expressing themselves as an artist, as a creative being on the instrument, you should do the same. Get your own musical freedom and self-expression and don't spend all your time trying to be somebody else, you know? Especially these super elite players like Stevie Ray Vaughan, Al Di Miola, you know, unless you're gonna spend hours and hours playing every day and mastering your instrument, and then going on world tours and playing for big live audiences every single night and honing your craft, you're never gonna sound like them. It's not gonna happen. Practicing a half hour, hour a day, you know, playing on weekends, you know, it, it, it's just, you're not gonna get there. So don't try to get there. Try to get to where you are. Try to find a level of self-expression that allows you to be you on the instrument. And that starts with singing, your phrasing, right? Or even just kind of speak it, spoken word kind of, if you're not comfortable singing. Tell a story to yourself while you're soloing, shifting between major and minor tonalities, which the listener will catch on to and they will go with you emotionally and they will really appreciate your solo taking them somewhere other than you just playing a bunch of notes. You know, that's not very interesting. And it's not very emotional, you know, other than the oh wow virtuoso factor, you know. Other than that, it gets kind of old. So learn the kind of melodic and rhythmic gist of a phrase, unless you really want to learn that phrase by ear and you don't really have a lot of phrases to pull from, okay? But otherwise, just pick something that you really like and get close to it. Apply a different mode to it. Um, keep it in the same tonality if it's in a minor 
pentatonic, don't play, try to get that phrasing with a major scale or major pentatonic, you know, but maybe use a minor mode instead of the pentatonic to get different note choices. Maybe change your target notes. They land on the octave, you land on the seventh, right? They land on the fifth, you land on the flat five. So you're still getting close to the ascending, descending peaks and valleys of the phrase, but you're sprinkling in your own note choices, which is going to make you sound like you and not tie you down to, oh, did I play that phrase exactly the way Eddie Van Halen played it, right? No, man, I played it the way I played it and it felt good and the audience dug it, right? So that's what making music's all about. Thanks for stopping by. I hope this lesson on phrasing was helpful. And I'll see you all next time.